um, realized I didn't, uh, when I was going over my trading view tutorial, I realized I did not cover the time frames. Uh, that's, that's a pretty important part of your charting software. Um, so how you set that up, this is how I set it up, is right here on this little drop down arrow, uh, you know, once you, once you log in and uh, bring up your super charts, I believe it is. Uh, so let me see. Yeah, you go to your, you go to this, when you log in, go to products, go to super charts, and uh, it'll bring this up. <clears throat> I usually leave up my uh, watch list, um, and I've got my favorite indicators set up. Everything's set up the way I like it, but um, so for the most part, on the time frame, now you're going to get different opinions. You know, if you're day trading or if you're short-term investing, there's a little different strategies to that. So, but what I found that works the best for me, and this is what I've learned from my previous mentors is to start on a weekly chart, okay? That's, that's where it indicates this W right here. That's one week. So every candle indicates, for crypto, it's seven days of a week because it's 24-7. It never stops. Um, so, see, I've got this Orca USDT pulled up on Coinbase or USD. Um, um, that's another thing I'll show you on crypto is uh, say, you're, say you're trying to buy this Orca. Uh, I'm getting sidetracked here already, but <clears throat> let, me finish my, let me finish my time frames first. Um, so you see what I've got. I've got a 12-month, I've got a 6-month, 3-month, monthly, 2-week, a weekly, a daily, a 12-hour, 8-hour, 6-hour, 4-hour, 1-hour, 15-minute, a 12-minute, and a five minute. Now I very seldom ever use the five or the 12, maybe a 15 minute. If I'm trying to fine tune my entry and exit, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll pull up this 15 minute and it, it might get you a little better price. Most time you can go off a one hour or, or, or a four hour. If you're doing a weekly trade, you know, a nine week or a 13 week trade, uh, you know, why haggle over a few pennies? You know, literally, you're, you're you're stepping over a dollar to pick up a dime. You know, haggling over a couple of pennies. Now, sometimes it could be a micro penny on some of these crypto coins. So um, sometimes you just it's kind of like a bar fight. You just got to close your eyes and dive in and hope for the best. You know, I mean, it, I know that doesn't sound like a very good strategy, but um, sometimes you can get caught up. You, you get analysis paralysis trying to get the perfect entry. You get, you try to get all your time frames to line up perfect and you could literally miss the easy money of a move waiting for a perfect setup all the way down to a one hour or a 15 minute chart. Um, what I found, if I can get a decent four hour chart, um, I'm, I'm going to buy in, you know, I'm going I'm to try to get on, I'm going to put it on a four hour chart. I'm going to drop down my arrow and I'm going to go off a four simple moving average. So that would be a four bar simple moving average on a four hour chart is technically most time. If you can get close to that price um, and if you're using your TD sequential, if you can get you know, a minus nine count like over here, or I mean, ideally, you know, this one went down a little further. Uh, you can throw on your Heikinashi candlesticks right here, smooth out your trend. You actually went down to two nine counts on Orca um, on a four hour chart before you finally got the bounce. Um, you know, you can watch on your, your momentum indicator, your stochastic RSI, once it crosses up, you know, usually your, your, your 20 level down here at the bottom. Um, I can zoom in on that, but right here is your 20 level that I'm talking about. 
of this uh, shaded area. When your when your when your price action or your momentum indicator crosses above that, that's indicating your price and your momentum of your price has reversed a downtrend and, and is starting back up to the upside most likely. So you see where that happened right here on this bar. Uh, that, that would have been a decent time, especially coming off a of nine, a minus nine. That, that would have been a really good time to probably buy in. But sometimes you miss it. You know, you're not going to get it on every one of them. I mean, if you're buying 20 or 30 different coins, sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to manage that much, especially if you've got a day job and you can't have your phone on while you're at work. Um, you're going to miss quite a bit. Um, so, you know, you, you can't beat yourself up. You just do the best you can and try to get the best price you can and hope, hope it's hope for the best, you know, but as long as you have a weekly setup, that's where you want to start. Uh, you need a weekly, some kind of weekly setup or weekly buy signal um, set up. And once you get that, then you can start going to your day, your daily time frame and start looking for buy signals or perfect setups on a day chart. Um, I think once you get that, then you can start getting into your fine tune entry price uh, then i'll go to my four hour and i'll start looking for you know some kind of minus nine count or something coming down um or you know at least a, a reversal in the momentum on the price action uh, ideally it would have been good to see it above this cloud ichimoku cloud system but um now orca is not a perfect setup right now it's it's what i call on a minus six so this could still come down for three more weeks. Your momentum indicator is your stochastic RSI is in the basement over here, what I call in the basement below your, your 20 level. So it's close to a reset. They call that a reset. Um, you know, you, you blow up here on your uptrend, stayed up here for nine weeks, nine, 10 weeks, and then it rolled over on your momentum and that's when your price action started dropping. Right here, you can follow it, you know, same thing, same, same exact time frame. But, um, and so until that crosses back up on a weekly basis, you're, that's, that's high stakes poker right there. You really don't want to be buying in. That's what they call trying to catch a fallen knife. You're, you're hoping you can time the, the drop as best you can, but it's pretty hard to do. I mean, it's, it's kind of an art form to it. I mean, you could throw a Fibonacci on it and get pretty close. Um, you know, it's, it's close to this set, uh, 618. I would probably go ahead and throw a, a 786 on there also. Just knowing a lot of these smaller coins, um, they tend to uh, hit that 786 level on a bounce level, unless they've got a lot of, like a really big following or some kind of big news event to turn this thing around, most likely, especially if it closes below the 6.8, this point 6.18, most likely it's gonna come down and test this 0.786 level on your Fibonacci. Like I said, if you don't have the TD sequential, you can throw this on, on your uh, Heikinashi count and kind of smooths out your trend where you know you want to start where all your green candles pretty much started so you can start on this four bar or you could drag over here to this one bar they're they're pretty much the same price i mean it was just kind of a sideways move there for three or four weeks until it got started <clears throat> i didn't even know it existed until <laughs> missed most of this well, I didn't. I didn't buy. I don't think I made a dime on Orca. Matter of fact, I uh, actually lost money on it because I, I bought in late. I think um, got greedy and tried to get in late. But so, um, well, to give you an example, um, so anyway, for your time frames, if you want to set it up, 
You can come over here and you can star your favorites. And once you hit this star, it's going to save it up here as one of your favorite time frames. So, you know, you can play with whatever you like. Like I say, I don't really use that 12 minute. I can take that off. I'm pro <clears throat> probably, not, I can't say never, but, you know, very seldom I'm going to go to a five minute chart. Um, I'll leave the 15. Uh, I definitely use the one hour. I use the four hour quite a bit. I don't really use the six or eight that much. I don't really use the 12 hour much, to be honest. I use it daily quite a bit. Um, so if you don't like them and you're not using them, you know, it doesn't hurt. Just turn them off, you know. I mean, just just free up some space, you know, and just simplify your life and your chart as much as you can. Just takes a little extra stress off of you, I think. It's two week. I'm never going to use a two week. I might use a, a six month and a, and a 90 day. Definitely might use a 12 month. You know, that's pretty much a year on, well, that is a year on uh, everything. Um, so to give you an example, I bought in Alluvium today. Okay. Uh, so I started on my weekly. I've got a minus nine count. It's bouncing on this nine. Hopefully this will confirm and print, stay, stay printing this number nine bar at the end of the week on Sunday. Ideally, you want to see it complete that nine. Ideally, you want this nine to close below this six bar close. It did make a new lower low, but um, so once I see this, then I'm going to start looking on a day chart. Um, and, you know, once I get my buy signal on a day chart, uh, then I'm going to go to uh, a four hour. And when I see the four hour set up, perfect, or at least as close as I can get it, um, <clears throat> you're going to, I'm, I'm going to pull the trigger and hope for the best. Um, I was hoping I would get, I was watching this yesterday. I put a Fibonacci on this. I saw this nine count, put a Fibonacci on it. I was hoping I'd get, you know, some kind of retrace down to this, at least this 382 level on the Fibonacci. I, I threw in a bid around the 7607, 06 level. Um, didn't get it. It, you know, just kind of went sideways. It, it, it printed a flag pattern. This is what they call a flag pattern. This would be your pole, part of the flag pole. And then this would be your flag right here of your, your price action. <clears throat> so it broke out above this this morning which was a really good signal. Usually when it breaks out above this top of your pole here, it'll retest it. And it did right here. I was hoping it would hold this price level, 78.65. So I threw my bid in. I raised my bid from 76.07 to 78.65. I mean, not a big deal. That's what, $2 price move, $1.50. Um, you know, you're back above it right now, so I'm back in the black. I'm making some money now. I mean, it's it could still go against you, but um, so I'm watching this. This is my entry level. I, I mark it off on my chart. I make sure, you know, I, I throw a horizontal line on it. You know, you drop that in, and then uh, once you get that dropped in, then you can, you can select it, go to your, your settings wheel. You can coordinate it. Get the exact down to the penny where you where you bought it, and then I, I always label it my entry level right here. That's my entry price. Hit OK, and then I set an alarm on it after I got in. It, the price went below it for a little while till it completed this four-hour candle. Now it's rallying back up. <clears throat> so I put an, an alert on it, crossing up once per bar, and I just put making money. And hit save. And so it, it just alerted me just a while ago that uh, it had crossed back above it right here at 1540 and whatever, or my 411, I guess. Maybe it may have crossed back twice, I guess. 340 and then again at 411. 
Um, so that's what I do just to, just to keep my sanity, you know, because, I mean, if you're doing 20, 30 different coins, you know, and I'm trying to do commodities, I'm trying to do stocks, uh, you know, you're trying to watch your, your uh, macroeconomic indicators like bonds and your, your TLT, your TNX tickers and, and your interest rates, inflation, and, and you know, you can, get, you can get buried and get lost pretty quick, you know. It, so you have to have some kind of strategy and some kind of uh, portfolio management or you're going to get lost. And, you, and if, you don't, if you don't keep track of your money, there's an old saying, if you don't keep track of your money, somebody else will. And most likely it's going to end up from, from your account into their account. You know, so that's, uh, I definitely try to follow that, um, <clears throat> to the letter. If I, if I can, as much as I can, I try to, I just, you just, you just have to manage it. That's just consider this like your part-time job on the side. After you get done with your day job, this is your part-time job right here. You're managing your money. You're a portfolio manager, whether you want to be or not. I mean, uh, some of us are better at it than others, but if you've got a 401k, you know, it's not a bad idea to, to watch it and track it. You know, I mean, there's some theory that, you know, set it, forget it, just buy in and forget you have it. And in most cases, you're, you'll probably do better than a guy like me that's trying to time it. But um, at least if you're timing it and you're watching it, and, you know, hopefully you can foresee some kind of momentum change or a shift change uh, early to at least take, you know, capitalize on the most of your profits. Uh, I think that's the best strategy because especially with crypto, I've seen too many times. Well, UOS is a prime example where I pulled up on a weekly chart. Uh, I bought in right around this 15 cent zone over here in uh, September, October. Yeah, it was about the middle of September. And uh, I doubled my money. I made good money on it. But I didn't sell it because my broker made it illegal or made, you know, made it where they didn't provide service to United States citizens anymore. So I had to move my coins to a wallet and get it out of that broker account. So I was afraid to sell it, afraid I couldn't rebuy it anywhere. So I held it and I gave up 90% of my profit. You know, right now it went from the top, you know, all the way down. You're on a minus six. Now it is breaking out right now above a weekly downtrend line. So hopefully this thing's about to reverse. But And I plan on holding this for at least one to two years, I think. I think if I hang on to it that long, it, I'll be I'll be... Uh, you can make some decent money on it. You can see if it goes back anywhere near the all-time highs, it was up around 250 in 21, November of 2021. So, I mean, you're at, you know, I got in at 15 cents. I mean, that's, you know, I didn't time the exact bottom. You know, I could have got a little better price. I mean, it. I think the lowest low point during 2020, 2023 was right at 12 0.251 cents. So, you know, all right, I missed it by three pennies. Okay, I can live with that. <laughs> you know, I mean, if it goes back to 250, those three pennies aren't going to matter. You know, I mean, that's not going to, I'm not going to lose any sleep over, you know, three pennies, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it's all educated gambling. That's that's all it is. I mean, we're, we're just trying to, count cards at the blackjack table and try to, you know, improve our odds of success as much as we can uh, by using tools like TD Sequential, by using trend lines, by using Fibonacci retracement, uh, using your moving averages, um, your different time frames. Um, I've got a bad habit of not looking at stuff on a monthly chart. Um, if you're doing... Like super long term, that's probably a better way to to trade would be off a of monthly. You know, if you, you get a you get a monthly price action above a eighteen 
month moving average or a four month moving average, um, most time you're going to do pretty good with that. But, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get it. You know, it, it seems like you don't get it very often. You may only get that once or twice a year on a perfect setup. But, you know, like I say, if we'll, if we'll watch it at least on a weekly basis, you know, once or twice a week, doesn't hurt, pull it up. See, you know, make sure you got you got your alerts set on your trend lines. Uh, you've got you've got your your stop loss set up when you. Um, what I did on Alluvium is I went to a day chart and I set up my uh, my stop loss. I go I go a three day trailing stop. So I count three bars back, one, two, three, and this is my line right here for my stop loss, 70.48. So if price action drops to there, I've got an alert set that it's going to text me and tell me that I'm stopped out. I need to get out, close that position. And I hit save on it. I'm, I went ahead and labeled it as a stop. You know, that's my stop, stop loss. <clears throat> that's there my stop loss um hopefully we don't you know do any kind of fibonacci retracement on this thing but ideally i think if you can get two days closing above this 18 day moving average this is what i've learned from one of my other mentors here recently um that's a pretty strong momentum indicator and if you look at your other momentum indicators, most of these are they're crossing up, they're headed, you know, in the up, upward direction. Uh, now my four-day uh, Williams percent R, it it is kind of rolling over, so it may stall out for a day or so, you know, reset and then you know blow right back up. But really, I'm I'm hoping I can watch this on a weekly basis. Ideally, I'd like to hang on to this for nine weeks you know on, on a retrace hopefully uh at least get a 618 you know retrace off of this uh this could come back up to 102 zone pretty easy on, on alluvium um so if you want like there again if you want to know where to buy these coins uh some of these that i mentioned some of these you see them on my watch list whatever just go to coinmarketcap.com and you can set up an account with an email and login for free, uh, and then just go type in the company name, Alluvium, um, click on it, and uh, then you click on Markets, and this will tell you which brokers have it. So Coinbase is one of the top three that has it. You know, we can't trade with Binance. I'm not sure about this CEXIO. That's a new broker, I think, but um, SushiSwap, eh. KuCoin's the one that no longer services United States citizens. Gate, we can't use Gate. So a lot of these you can't hardly use for if you're a United, United States citizen. Legally, I mean, I don't think they're going to arrest you or nothing, but I mean, I'm not an attorney, so none of this is legal advice. None of it's financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only, but, um, you know... It, this this would you, you can you can buy this straight off MetaMask if you wanted to, you have your MetaMask wallet. Uh, if it's Ethereum based, you can go to the Ethereum network on your MetaMask. Type in swap Ethereum. Now you're gonna need some Ethereum in your MetaMask for for fees for gas gas fee, but or swap fee or whatever they call it. <clears throat> Looks like you could you can use this trust wallet too. Um, this contract is good for that. Um, and you can buy it right in your MetaMask wallet. Now, you know, pretty much MetaMask has simplified a lot in the last, you know, four years. They've they made it a lot easier than it used to be. But um, so there again, you know, if it goes back to all-time highs, I mean, you know, in, in November, this thing got up almost to 120, 117. Um, 
I think I think it's it's a decent company. You know, they're they're they're, they're the gaming industry is where this this coin is is based off of. You can you can go to their website, check them out if you want to. Uh, they they've got some games you can play. Most of their games are probably only accessible on a on a uh, Windows computer. Seems like for the most part, a lot of new games build out accessible on um, on um, Windows platform first, and then they will, you know, branch out for Apple, uh, MacBooks, and and uh, I'm not sure if they have games playable. You know, you can, you can you can play around on here and see what they got, but uh, it looks like this Alluvium uh, Arena is pretty big. I've heard I've heard a little bit about it. Um, they're on the Epic Game Store. Nice, does say Mac and Windows. That's cool. All right, see if we can play it, man. Let's let's check it out. I ain't need an account. Uh, proceed to download. So you'd have to download it on your computer. I really don't like doing that because. It just slows my computer down too much. So I, I try not to play games like this that make you download to your laptop. I mean, if I had just a, a computer designated only for gaming, I, I would do it. But uh, with me having to use this to create YouTube videos and, what I, and whatnot, I, I just don't want to slow my computer down, um, bog it down anymore. So... Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you definitely have to create an account to play it. Um, but I, I use this coin market cap a lot just for research. Uh, you know, look at their fully diluted market cap. Um, you know, as long as it's below a billion, you know, 600, 623 million is what they're saying this thing's worth right now. Now, that's fully diluted, so... Your circulating supply, you've got about half of your coins in circulating supply. Your total supply is 7.8 million, and you have 3.7 circulating. So there's about half your coins that could be locked up, most likely from the first investors, the seed investors that got early coins. So they could be unlocking at some point, um, there's a way you can look at that. You can go to a website called, I think it's Token, token.unlocks.app. That's the that's the website. Uh, go on here and type uh, ILV, Alluvium. Uh, let's see, emission. Uh, total unlocked progress. So they're 58% unlocked. That's about right. Um, previous events. Uh, vesting schedule. And you may have to create an account to be able to see some of this. Uh, the team and the seed have... Looks like four million coins of this. Treasury's got 1.4, and public has one million, I guess. Um, so, yeah, if you go to the if you go to the home page, upcoming unlocks. You can see like GMX has some coming up. Not a lot. I mean, it's $19,000 worth. Um, you know, I haven't played with this a whole lot. I tried to see if I could trade with it, set up trades. But so the theory is if you get a big unlock, uh, especially the prices at all-time highs, some of your seed investors might take profits and sell on you and it could drive the price down. So a lot of times it's good to wait for a big unlock 
see if the price re, you know reduces and then you could buy in you know and it might, might get a pretty good discount on the price um so you know just keep that in mind just a little trick of the trade for crypto um i don't use it enough um I probably should. I probably should look at this thing every day and see what's coming up. I mean, here's a Sui and Ajax. Uh, you know, there's there's a six million dollar unlock uh, coming up. Oh no, YGG's a big one. IMX. Uh, Avax has three hundred thirty nine million getting unlocked pretty soon. Algo. Uh, let's see, Sans, Sans, Aptos, 218 million, GMX. That's not much, you know, 19,000 is not a lot. Um, but, you know, you, you start seeing them in the two or 300 million, you know, dollar of unlock, that's, that's a pretty significant amount of coins that could hit the market. I would definitely... Keep an eye on those. If, if you see those like AVAX, that's $339 million worth of coins that could hit the market in 13 days, looks like. You see the time frame over here. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, hopefully. And uh, well, it's not too short, but hopefully it didn't drag on too long. Um, so, like I said, I bought Veracity and I bought Alluvium today um i guess time will tell we'll see see how it plays out tomorrow and hopefully don't get stopped out um i think it's it's set up about the best those two were set up really good they both had minus nine on the weekly set up on td sequential um so i really like seeing that um so I went ahead and bought in. I'm watching OHI on a daily. Uh, that's a stock. It pays a really good dividend. It pays like over a 9% dividend. Uh, but ideally, I want to see another close above this 18-day moving average and above this will stop indicator price of $29.56. Uh, I'd love to see it close above this weekly downtrend line. Uh, I don't know if it's going to do it or not. I had good earnings, I guess, or decent earnings um, today or yesterday after market close. MicroStrategy, I'm watching MicroStrategy too. It had a blowout day today. It's following Bitcoin, most likely. Um, i like to try to get it somewhere around a four-day moving average probably tomorrow if it closes strong. Um, I think that's that's this thing's about to take off again um it's about a seasonality time frame for bitcoin to run also looks like it's 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 priming back up for another run um you can see on the momentum indicator starting to cross up on a weekly basis on uh, stochastic rsi hasn't quite confirmed it yet but it's kind of leaning towards that direction it looks like um Nvidia, I don't know when this thing's ever gonna pull back. It's, you know, it's on an eight count. Looks like it's gapping up after hours on a weekly, daily. Eh, sold off a little bit today, but I don't know when this thing's gonna pull. You know, it, it could go up another, at least another week, one week, go hit a nine count probably, and and it might pull back. I don't know when, but I probably throw a Fibonacci on it. Uh, I don't know, maybe go from there to there. Uh, you'd probably be lucky to get a 382 or might get a 618 Fibonacci retrace. Anywhere from 618 to 562. That'd be my guess. But Amazon, it's, it's had a nice run. Hit a 9, didn't really pull back to the 382. Now it's blowing out. It's on another... Going up, going to probably complete another nine count, <clears throat> most likely. Your dollar index, it's still going up on a weekly basis. So that's going to create pressure for your commodities. I got stopped out on my soybean trade. 
soybean meal. Uh, it's above the wheel stop, but I broke one of the rules. I didn't wait for a two-day confirmation above the 18-day moving average. Um, it kind of did it over here. But I think this was a head fake. It went right up against resistance on this trend line and then broke right back down. So that was a red flag when you didn't break above your trend line. Uh, ideally, I should have waited for that. Uh, Ichimoku, wise, you're below the cloud, but weekly, it's set up pretty decent. I think you'll get a bounce on it sometime in the next two weeks, probably. Uh, I'm guessing maybe next week, but it just depends on what the dollar index does. I'm watching XRP also. Uh, it's set up on a weekly basis. And so I'm watching it on a daily. I want to see it close above this wheel stop, a 0 0.5270. I want to get two days above it, closing above it. You know, you're getting you're right there at the 18 moving average today. Uh, but being that close to the wheel stop, I, I'd like to get both close above this wheel stop price zone right here for two days. And then that would be confirmation that it's time to pull the trigger and get in. So once I see that, I'll start watching a four hour chart and uh, try to get it on some kind of little pullback like right here. If you can catch it on a minus nine, that'd be ideal. Um, you know, may or may not get it. I could be working that day. You know, I may just have to throw in a bid, you know, um, wherever you can to try to get in on it. So, uh, Starbucks, kind of same thing. I'm watching. It needs to get above 98, 38 before it would be on a daily uh, buy signal. And that's close enough to the top of your Ichimoku <clears throat> cloud. I would probably wait for a close above that also, ideally. You are above your 18-day moving average, but so I don't know. You're giving up a lot of profit waiting for that confirmation, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I just prefer to follow those rules for confirmation. Um, I think if you'll stick to that kind of system and strategy, it'll keep you out of trouble. You know, you know a lot of head fakes, a lot of price action manipulation. Uh, a lot of times it'll blow up here, bump its head on top of the cloud, and then right back down. So if you don't have enough momentum to sustain that, uh, sometimes you're better off just staying on the sidelines and not losing money. So, anyway, I'll end this video. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Hey, uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you don't mind. Uh, I'm trying to build my account up on subscribers. Um, if I can get to 500 subscribers, I might do some kind of giveaway or something. So, uh, tell all your friends and family about it. And share it on social media, whatever you got to do. We'll uh, catch y'all later.